All right, I think it's time for a 90 day system update video. Hey, it's Lindsay and believe it or not, I've been in my personal sized rings for 90 days, which has got to be some sort of recent Lindsay Scribbles record. The last time I remember being this consistent, I had just discovered the Hobonichi Weeks for planning in 2021. So needless to say, it's been a couple years since I found a bit of a groove again. Uh, so today I think we're gonna dive right into it. We're gonna go over the pros of rings, the cons that I'm facing, a few things that I think I wanna switch up and we'll end with a flip through of my current setup. Quick housekeeping though, if you saw my last video, which was a stationary declutter and reorganization video, I mentioned that I set up a passport size bullet journal and I fully intended on moving into it, but that lasted about three days before I went running back to my personal rings. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit as to why I decided not to stick with it, but I will be doing a bonus video later in the week with a flip through of that setup. If you're looking for some passport inspiration, I do really like how the setup turned out, but I don't think strings is for me right now. So I'm gonna be continuing on with my personal rings. So let's get into the pros here. And there are many, I have to say, I guess that's why I ended up running back for the rings. But I have mentioned a few of these before, but all together here are the main pros that I found being in a personal ring agenda again. First and foremost, all in one organizer. I've mentioned this in a few of my other ring planning videos, so I apologize if this is sounding like I'm a bit of a broken record, but usually my planner lineups consist of three to four notebooks. I'll have my planner slash bullet journal, multiple alternate options, but we won't count those, a work planner, some sort of dear diary journal, and some sort of memory keeper and right now all of that is together in one place from both like a physical space thing one agenda has been really nice i've taken a handful of trips since moving into rings and only packing one organizer has been lovely even though this is a little bit bigger than my usual planner it has saved me a significant amount of room in my carry-on and my check bag I also wake up about an hour before my husband and I have to like do this little escape route and sneak out of the bedroom and usually I'll bring my planners with me and it's been nice just grabbing the one notebook with my pen in it and kind of escaping out the door versus you know one two three four notebooks the pen case and jingling and at that point my husband is grumbling with me so just having one thing on my nightstand makes me feel less stressed at night it's one thing to grab in the morning it's one thing to travel with and having it all together has been really lovely. I'm also finding that I'm keeping up with things a lot better. I'll talk about this as we kind of move into more of the pros, but overall, one big book of everything has been absolutely amazing for me and probably my favorite reason why I am in rings. The next main pro that is I mean, I'm going to sound sarcastic, but life changing <laughs> is adding my work planner back into my personal planner. And I work from home and I think in an endeavor to create as much physical space between my work life and my personal life, I have been using a separate work planner since 2020. I assume my thought process was having a separate work planner kind of gave me as much physical barrier between my work planning and my personal planning. But the reality is, is that work has gotten more and more stressful each year. And because work has been in a separate notebook, I have a lot of resistance to even reach for it. Even if it's a really cute notebook or really cute setup, I don't want to touch it because all that's in there is stress. And then the stress gets worse because I'm not using my planner. I am a paper planner person. I can have all the digital tools in the world, but nothing works better for me than having just a running to-do list written down on a piece of paper. And since I've moved my work planning back into my rings, I wouldn't say that work has gotten astronomically better, but I'm noticing I'm significantly less stressed than I have been in a really long time. And I think that's mostly because it's in here and it feels less intimidating. Because it's surrounded by all the stuff I love, it's a little less scary to at least just crack open the divider, take a look at my current to-do list, and I'm picking away at things slower. So it's less out of sight, out of mind. 
My work planning is extremely simple and some days as you can tell I absolutely don't even need to use it but just being able to knock out some of these small easy wins I'm finding is managing my stress levels with work way better than I have in the last few years. So this is like the main thing for me. It's still compartmentalized behind a divider. I think my brain does well with that. I was slightly nervous that I was just gonna be afraid that my work tasks are in my planner all the time. Hiding it behind a divider, I don't really think about it after work or on the weekends, but on a weekday, I'm just way more likely to at least open up to my current weekly, use it on the days that I need it, and it's been a huge benefit and part of the reason why I stepped away from the passport temptation because when I set up my passport bullet journal, I immediately set up a second passport to use as my journal and sketchbook. And then I was left with this big question mark of how do I wanna plan for work? And I streamed with my patrons and we were talking about it and I had several ideas kicking around but post stream, none of them were exciting to me. I had several things in my cart and I just realized that I was going down a pretty rapid rabbit hole of things that weren't going to align well with my low buy. I wasn't excited to use any of them and I have a perfectly good work system that has been working for the last three months well even in my rings and it's one of the main reasons why I decided, nope, if it's not broke, we're not gonna fix it. Let me stick with my rings for a little bit longer. Another huge pro that I've had this time around with rings, and this isn't really ring specific, but something that I've been doing is combining my daily logs with my memory keeping. And it's a simple thing, but it has really helped me stay consistent in my memory keeping. The older I get, the more important memory keeping is to me. I used to joke like, what's the point of memory keeping? I was an arrogant young little engineer that didn't know that there's a lot of magic in tracking how you feel about things and collecting life's moments and romanticizing the small things because not every day is all that great if you're not willing to romanticize size it just a little bit. So now in my 30s, I really appreciate memory keeping. And over the last few years, I typically will have my bullet journal, which is a small tiny planner where I keep track of these like to do's and some high level memory keeping. But then I would have this separate notebook that was a bit of a challenge to do memory keeping on a weekly or daily basis, usually in the form of a Hobonichi. And I don't know why it took me so long to do this, but I am extremely consistent, religious with my daily logs. Even when I'm on vacation, I'm lost without a daily log. I always set up at least if I've got two things on it, that's great. But I set up a daily log every single day. And by tacking on the memory keeping on the bottom section here and actually journaling about the day, one, it's really cohesive to flip through and see what did I accomplish? What did I try to accomplish? What was happening that day? And then how did I feel about it? Or were there memories that I wanted to collect inside jokes, pieces of ephemera, photos that piqued my interest, those types of things. Having it all together, one, I've been way more consistent than I have been with my memory keeping in a long time. I even did all of my memory keeping when I was on vacation, which I never do. And I don't journal every single day. I'll show you that here in a second. But two, this has been really good for my routines. When I was in a Hobonichi cousin, I used to have this really good bedtime routine of sitting down and journaling in my daily pages right before bed. So it got me off my phone, away from my screen, and kind of mentally in this headspace that, yep, it's bedtime, it's time to go to bed. And I've kind of gotten back to that with this where before bed, I sit down, I set up my daily log for the next day, and then I'm already there. I might as well doodle something, print out a photo, sit down and do my journaling about my day before bed. So that's been good. I find I'm getting back into that, like going to bed on time and sleeping a little bit better and putting my phone away a little bit earlier in the night because I took something that I've been struggling to do consistently and I stacked it on top of something that I am doing extremely consistently. And if you read Atomic Habits, this language should feel familiar, but I essentially have it stacked and I can't believe it's taken me that long to figure it out, but I'm really, really liking this. Another big thing about rings that is a double-edged sword pro and con is the flexibility. 
So I mentioned back in my first ring setup video that rings is my origin story. I started planning back in college or seriously planning on paper in college with a Filofax original and personal size. So it's been really fun to kind of come back to this, but I think because personal size is my first planner, I've got this sense of nostalgia, nostalgia <laughs> that I, I have when I'm in here. And for that, when I was planning in college, I was really planning to survive, but I had everything in one place and I had to be hyper functional. I was really time poor because I was a college student working multiple jobs and for some reason couldn't say no to all the clubs and running <laughs> events and things like that, like as type A people do, but I didn't have a lot of resources to spend on money. I was trying to figure out how to be successful in school, not miss deadlines, keep track of projects, keep track of my work schedule, learn how to be an adult, cook meals for myself, yada, 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 all that stuff that's a crash course in college or just post college <laughs> for a lot of us. And I was in a ring planner that allowed me to kind of organize all those things, compartmentalize them. And I, 10 years ago, you couldn't go out and just like buy dividers and buy inserts and things like that. You really had to get creative with what was available. So there's a certain amount of organizational creative energy that I get when I'm in a ring planner. And I think it's the nostalgia, but I'm really loving that. So long story to say, I feel my most productive in a ring planner. And I think over the last three months, I've really seen that manifest because there's a lot of spreads that I have done in this particular setup that I haven't done in two or three years because I am either afraid of running out of pages, which will lead us into our next pro, or I'm too lazy to set them up. So for example, one, just like having a better work planner, the layout that I've actually been trying to do without drawing it out week over week, made an insert, it's in my planner, it's accessible. Reference information that always gets lost, printed it out, punched it added into my planner, it is accessible. I'm really working on my health and fitness this year. I needed a section to just tackle that. I can add a divider, create habit trackers, put all the reference information, notes and things, taking notes, writing down meal plans, things that I've done in previous year's planners, but they always get abandoned because if I was doing like this level of menu planning and habit tracking and journaling about getting myself back in shape because mental health and physical health is a huge goal for me in 2024, this would take up like 30 pages of a pocket bullet journal. And then instead of getting four months per notebook, I'd be getting three months per notebook. And then after every three months, I'd have to set it all over again. So there's just a lot of resistance that over time, things have kind of phased themselves out of my planner. And now that I'm back in rings, they are all coming together so elegantly and I'm feeling productive. I actually feel on top of things that have been slipping through the cracks for years. And my next big project section that I'm going to be adding is like a Lindsay Scribble shop section because I am ready to like really revamp things and kind of give it a bit more energy again. And anyway, all that to say, rings are extremely flexible. I feel my most productive in here. Sometimes the double-edged sword of that is that if things are too flexible, I can get out of hand really quickly. But I think right now I'm, I'm in a good Zen flow state with it. So I'm not all that worried about it. So last main pro that I want to talk about is kind of a nod to Claire from online. She just started a second handle called um, Claire is not afraid of paper. And every time I say this, I think of her. So shout out to her, go check out her stuff. Um, but Lindsay is not afraid of running out of pages. And this was probably like the nail in the coffin for the passport bullet journal setup. When I'm in my passport and I was trying to emulate this, which is memory keeping and daily logging on the same page, the math wasn't mathing. Um, this is something that I found to be really beneficial and I don't want to give it up yet. Maybe in the future I will, but having it all together has been such a sigh of relief of memory keeping on that daily log, like I mentioned. If I do this in my passport with the inserts that I have without spending any other money, it left me with four pages per month, which were consumed by my habit tracker, my mood log, and a cover page, and then whatever else I needed for the month. 
And I really quickly realized that taking notes like this, like I'm doing in this fitness section, wasn't going to happen. Um, paper running lists of shop ideas and things like that wasn't going to happen. And all of a sudden I noticed that I was becoming really scared of writing things down again in my planner. So yes, the whole point of my passport bullet journal was to have this more modular system. So the solution is really easy. Get another insert, only do two inserts, per, two months per insert versus three. It's all solvable, but right now I don't have the inserts in my home and i'm trying not to spend a lot of money and even if i had all the excess inserts the archive binders get really really cramped with five inserts in them as is and i was imagining maybe needing six or seven and it's like ugh, if your archive isn't functional it's not it's just not that great of a system for me personally in my current season of life so Maybe my archive binder for rings will get over full and I'll be saying the exact same thing. But for now, I find I am writing everything down. I don't feel obligated to keep everything I write down if I don't need to. I can throw it away. It's a piece of paper. <laughs> but if I want to keep it, I can. And I'm not afraid of writing things down, which I think is helping me be more productive, be less stressed, feel more organized. And I'm like seeing this cascade ripple effect. So anyway, I think we're like 15 minutes into my love letter with my personal rings, but as you can tell, I'm very passionate about this and I'm really loving being in personal rings. Okay, so let's quickly touch on the cons. There are really two main cons that I'm finding being in personal rings. Okay, so first of all is the size. I am a tiny planner girly. I like my passports, I like my pockets, and I'm fully analog for my personal life. So if I schedule a doctor's appointment or my friends say, hey, can you come over or can we do a movie on Friday? I am checking this right here. I'm checking my monthly. <laughs> I am not checking Google, any of that. My work stuff, yes. Personal stuff, no, it's all on paper. So I feel obligated to take my planner with me everywhere. Otherwise I'm telling someone like, oh, let me get back to you or I'm texting it to myself. Let me check when I get home, that kind of thing. I have one purse that fits this bag or fits this planner, one bag that fits this planner rather. And I don't like using it all the time. So solution could be buy a new bag <laughs> that fits this, but I'm on a low buy. I promise that video is coming next weekend. Um, so I don't want to buy a new bag. It's against my rules and I don't need a new bag and I haven't ever needed a new bag. <laughs> and I'm missing using my tiny belt bag. So solution to this is I will be setting up my pocket rings as an on the go calendar and wallet system. I'm thinking through what I want that to look like because I really want them to work together versus one replacing the other. I think the old, like I talked about archiving and memory keeping being important to me now that I'm in my thirties, having a single archive is also very important to me, I've come to realize. So I think staying in personal size for now realistically makes the most sense but i'm gonna add a pocket rings in so that i can have an on-the-go calendar for those days where i'm just like no i just want to take a belt bag and that's that and i'll have to sync my calendars once a week but i think that is a manageable solution for now and who am i kidding i would love to sync calendars and plan my planners <laughs> once a week just for fun so that's gonna address that one the next con, again, solvable with money, but I'm on a low buy, so I'm not going to touch it, is actually the paper. This is Kikuyo business paper, and I really do continue to sing this praises. If you're a fountain pen person and you want to use rings and you want to print your inserts yourself versus buying from a shop that sells fountain pen friendly inserts, Kikuyo business paper on Amazon is going to be your friend. The thing I don't like about it is that the paper is white. Now it's not like the brightest white in the world, but after three days in my passport traveler's notebook, cream 68 GSM Sands and Tomo River paper is chef's kiss. I love that paper. And so I know I could find eventually loose leaf 68 GSM cream Tomo River paper, but one it's expensive. Even if I wasn't on a no buy, it's like $18 for a hundred sheets where this is like 500 sheets for $18. And two, I'm, I'm on my low buy, no buy. So I've got plenty of paper to use up. It's not a need. We're gonna have to sit on it. I've got other paper options at home. We have to use the paper at home first. So kind of a con, but also not that big of a con. There's ways to solve it. I'm just choosing not to at this point. 
Okay, so that was probably a video in itself, but I still want to do a flip through of this because I have switched up some of my inserts. I've redone pretty much all of my habit trackers so that they have a grid in the background versus being kind of like blank space. I'll show you as we flip through that. I'm working on making these available in the shop. No pressure to buy these inserts. You probably have something similar in your collection already or the ones that I previously listed are basically the same thing. It's just, I wanted grids because if we've We've mentioned this before, I'm trash for aesthetics and grids is my aesthetic this year. So, um, but those will be coming. So if you're interested in the particular ones that I'm showing, I will be listing those. But other than that, let's get into it. So this is the Filofax Ranger. This was a Christmas gift for my parents and this is considered vintage. You can find them occasionally on eBay. I'm starting to see them pop up a little bit. You have to be pretty diligent. Uh, but that's what it is, and she's my baby. I love her. <laughs> um, so in here, I've got a little bit of deco. I've got a gloomy from uh, our beloved Megan Rhiannon. I've got a Instax photo that I took uh, in December. On the front, I've got um, like a little inspo person and then um, some acetate that I printed on. The printable acetate I got from Amazon and I found it through Amanda Lee Plans. So I'll leave a details on that down below. And then I have an insert from Peanuts Planner Co. This is her dated yearly bundle. I think the number is 147 and I use this as my year at a glance, but also this is where I'm breaking down my goals by quarter, which is something I haven't done on paper for a while. So I'm glad to, to be doing that again. I have uh, two by three freebies for my shop and a horizontal half page, just some available for me up in the front there. And then we move into my first section. My dividers are from Filofax. They are nothing special, but I really like them. Okay, so the first section is my habit trackers, lists, collections, notes. Um, these are things that'll typically stay in my planner for as long as I need them. So ideally the whole year, but just kind of whatever their life cycle is before they need to be archived. I did go ahead and make myself an index. I probably need to do a separate video on how I'm attempting to index in unnumbered planners, but the short version is I'm indexing by date and then I've got some codes for some different sections. But once I get that all figured out, I'll do a video on it. I have my mood log. This is the compact mood log for my shop that I've edited to um, basically have the grids in them. And then I added a section at the bottom so I can do a little bit of a recap. Monthly habit tracker on the back of that. And then I have my adulting log. And again, just kind of added grid to it because I think it looks a little bit nicer for me right now. And these are the things that I need to um, either an un unautomated uh, or just like adulting things like pay my registrations or like how often do I wash our mattress pad, things like that. On the back of it, I turned it kind of into a medical log. So I'm just tracking like when I renew prescription, did I go to, to a doctor's appointment? Uh, I've been in, in and out of urgent care for the last couple of months for some personal health things. I'm okay, but just um, trying to keep track of that so I can see, okay, when did I go in and any notes that I wanna have, that's what I'm using that for. Tracking my cycle, this is a modified version of the annual monthly insert from my shop. I added a note section, made it a four millimeter grid in personal size, and then there's room for some notes here. If I want to leave anything, like if I had a particularly weird cycle, I could just, you know, write down those types of things. On the back, I've got my no buy item, low buy, no buy item guide. This will be covered in extensiveness in the low buy video next week, so stay tuned. But I'm using a version of that annual monthly to track my no buy. And then uh, anything I do ended up, end up purchasing, I'm, I'm listing out here. But again, we'll talk about that next week. On the back, I am keeping track of what planner I'm in. So I'm just counting the days and rings. I did have my three day flirtation with my Passport TN, but I've decided that three days is not enough <laughs> to totally reset the counter because uh, it was a long weekend, right? So I cannot be held accountable for what I plan in over the weekend. <laughs> I have my workout log, which is an annual weekly that I've modified um, so I can have some notes section there on the back. 
This is my YouTube video ideas and my Patreon posts. So each week I do either a video and something for my patrons. So ideas on the sticky notes, but just kind of where I'm keeping track as I schedule things so I can stay accountable. Um, I will be listing this as the 52 weekly log, I think is what I'm gonna call it. Some inserts I wanna add to the shop. My Patreon perks hasn't changed. This is where I keep track of the things that I release for my patrons uh, month over month, along with some income stuff for some goals and an expense log for the shop on the back. My off-cut shopping list. My debits spread, which is pretty um, personal to my use. And then I have my spending and package tracker. This is exactly the same as the one that's on the shop. I just added a grid to the background. So there's that a list of forms I'm waiting on to do my taxes. This is on my daily log insert, by the way. A wish list, which I added a category. So I have like a checkbox, like, did I get the thing? The date added, cause I'm trying to have things sit on my wish list for at least a week, what it is. And then I have got space to kind of categorize things. My current categories are planner, clothing, or other. <laughs> I don't seem to want things that aren't in those three. Gift ideas list for my family members. My reading log. A date night log, which um, haven't gotten on a date night yet this year. We need to get on that. Um, oh, to the back of my reading log, I added a TBR or a to be read list. Cause I don't think I'll read this many books, but we'll see. Um, so how I set up my TBR was basically like check mark, did I read it? And then category. So I did P for physical, K for Kindle, A for Audible, and then F for fan fiction. Cause sometimes I have books that I've queued up on Audible, but I don't have it physically or just kind of to see. And then a list of that. Right now my TBR books is mostly things that I have. I think I should probably replace like the fan fiction with L for library, or I need to loan it or something. I don't know. The, I, this is the section that I'm unsure about before I create a listing for that, but let me know what you guys do with your TBR list. I also have my call log, which is the same as my date log. It's just different title. My Stardew Valley reference information, I have a video on gaming and how I track that in my planner. So all those infographics can be linked. They're found in the links down below, but they're from Reddit and it's just reference information for a game I play a ton of. And then um, some Filofax blue paper, which I shamelessly added to my planner after seeing a reel from Sleepy Techo. Um, quick shout out section, if you've made it this long, if you're into ring planning and you're kind of into this like, nostalgic 90s uh messy functional type of thing or like looking for my planner inspo people uh right now sleepy techo uh sleepy notes club and um angel's planner i think angel's planner is technically in a pocket moleskin this year by the looks of it but she's got great beautiful pocket rings photos on her instagram i'll have all their handles in the description box if you want to check any of them out and I think Sleepy Notes Club just started a YouTube channel in December, so her videos are over here as well. Okay, um, so next section is my agenda section, or this is where my calendar pages are. So I did take a stab at making a monthly calendar. I will be listing an undated version because we're pretty much in February now, so I don't think uh, listing a 2024 dated version would be that great. Also, these are a pain in the butt to make. People who release dated calendars, like they they deserve some sort of reward. This is super labor intensive and I found a lot of mistakes already, but I just wanted to see what it would look like because I wanted a grid monthly and I was like, let me just try and take a stab at it. So I did make myself a monthly and this is where I put all my scheduling, birthdays, events, your usual stuff for your monthly along with a running to-do list. After my monthly, I've got um, basically another uh, annual monthly or adulting log to keep track of my uh, future events for 2025. That's just kind of what I printed on the back of December so that I could write down any future event and appointment. And then we have my monthly recaps. I need to do January's, but basically what I do each month is I print out um album cover for what i was listening to for the month and then i recap like how the month went so it's something i picked up doing in my bullet journal and i wanted to bring it over to ring so i made myself an insert to do that then we have my weeklies 
So I'll show you kind of like the subtle differences that I made. So this is the rolling weekly that's at my shop that I've been using for the last three months. I modified it to have um, a double space because I've been liking that and then a extra column so that I can write on the line versus between the lines. It's a subtle thing. But whenever I'm in my passport, I always do this right on the line. And I was like, you know what? What's the point of being able to make inserts if I don't want to make something exactly for myself? So I made an on the line version. Let me know if you're interested in that. I think if you own this, I'll just add it to that file and like send the update as like a Lindsay's version. Um, so if you already own it, you'll just get that and still have this. But um, let me know. Otherwise, this is this is just for me um list of things to add to that pocket ring setup that i was telling you i've been thinking about and then we have my dailies and that's another thing i really love about being in rings is that i'm a monthly weekly daily planner and i don't have to settle <laughs> i can have my monthly weeklies and my dailies and any other kind of setup or insert that i need i don't know like the flexibility uh this is just a piece of acetate that i added a tab on it the tab is from traveler's company and this is what I use just to kind of like find the beginning of my daily pages. But when I archive it, this is how I separate my months out and my archive binder. But dailies, I did a bit of experimentation, particularly in January. I added a horizontal daily log to the shop and really like how that turned out. So here's a day where I was like, I don't feel like journaling and I just wrote that down and that's fine. Um, so yeah, like here's a good example. Um, made myself like a horizontal page. I really like having the extra horizontal space for journaling. I found this to be really easy. It's a little bit easier for me to like composition an aesthetic <laughs> horizontal page versus a vertical. So I had a lot of fun with this one, did that for a few days. I also did some like DIY horizontals in December, but I actually made myself like an insert to use this month. I just think they're super cute. <laughs> I think um, a horizontal for me is like a go-to in pocket size. So in personal, it felt like a little bit long, but um, did try that out. Did miss a few days. It happens. Um, but then I was back to my vertical over the last uh, week and a half here and still adding in ephemera and things like that, but really loving, Loving this. I don't know. They're coming out really cute. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm drawing a little bit more, which is always important. And then I have all my dailies for the current month of January in here. My next section is the work section, and this is really basic. I have my agile work calendars, so I know when my sprints start end and when I'm traveling and things like that. And then I have my five day vertical weekly inserts, which I just use for my running to do list for work. And I keep track of my hours at the top. And then I was doing like affirmations or appointments. I use this top section a little bit different week over week, but it's pretty basic pen and paper, important things kind of <laughs> boxed up and stuff. Um, probably am due to do like an updated how I plan for work type of video, but it's, it's pretty basic. It's just running to-do lists at the end of the day. So this next section is my health and fitness section, and I'm gonna be a little bit cryptic because I don't really wanna talk about like diet stuff on the internet because I'm not an expert and I don't want, um, I don't want opinions, I guess. Uh, but basically some things to talk about is I'm doing my meal planning on a sticky note. The sticky note template um, I will list in the shop as just a craft sticky note from Daiso, but I printed it out and I'm just like meal planning. So I know what servings I have of what in the fridge, just lunch and dinner, tracker for the week, what I want to eat next week, and then a grocery list. And I have a month's worth kind of printed out in here. And then this is a massive habit tracker for the things I'm trying to do on a daily ba basis to help me with my goals. I made myself a measurement log so I can measure myself because non-scale victories are important. Uh, weekly observations, if I notice like, oh, this meal is keeping me fuller longer, or this was hard because, or this situation, those types of things, writing down the non-scale victories, and then um, more notes pages for notes on things that I'm learning throughout my program. 
Behind cover number five is my Dear Diary journal. And this is basically where I get to play with stickers and fountain pens, but this is where I write everything and everything. So I will brain dump in here. I will vent about how I feel. I will ramble about planners. I print off pictures of things I like. Um, all those types of things kind of end up in these pages and I don't know it's my favorite part I've even dabbled back into creative writing a little bit as well I am keeping these I have recently forgone the margin version I had made a margin version reminiscent slash inspired from Megan Rhiannon I didn't list these because she's an insert very similar and I got the idea from her but I'm back to just like a plain grid insert um, and liking how these are compositioning a little bit better as well. I've been favoring this brown ink in my fountain pen lately and pretty much all the writing is done with my uh, Twisby Diamond 580. And then I have plenty of blank pages back here as well. The final section is my sketchbook and I'm still using my Midori MD paper to that I cannibalized from a standard size traveler's notebook insert. I just kind of cut it up, punched it, added it in because it's watercolor friendly and I never use them anyway. But this is just when I feel like doodling or sketching or whatever, I've been coming back in here and filling it out. I have been pulling my pages out at the end of each month. So as you can tell, January, not a big sketching month. I drew a couple of things, but I love having it here and accessible and as part of my system. And, you know, planners can be for more than just planning, right? So it's fun having it all together. I then have a page lifter from Foxy Fix, a couple stickers, a random Pokemon Umbreon, yeah, Umbreon card. And I also typically will put my pencil board back here too. I've got it in the slip pocket right now, but most of the time it is like this, which I use as a straight edge on my daily logs. And that's that, that's my planner setup. I clearly love it. <laughs> and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know down below. I'll try and put kind of like all the details and things like that. But if you guys are in a ring planner, I would also love to know, or if you just kind of enjoy seeing the ring planner content, or even if you just like these kind of updates where I talk about why I'm liking a planner or why I'm hating a planner, let me know down below. But if you've made it this long, I know this was a very long one. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I hope to see you next week.